آنتیا مکینتایر در سراسر ایران زنان، مردان و جوانان شجاع از رهبری شما خانم رجوی و جنبش مقاومتی که رهبری می کنید الهام و امید می گیرند. مردم ایران می دانند که شما و شورای ملی مقاومت در مورد خاست مشروع مردم ایران برای یک جمهوری دموکراتیک سازش نخواهید کرد. همانطور که رژیم کنونی منشه تروریسم، سرکوب و بیسباتی است، ایران دموکراتیک آینده می تواند منبع حقوق بشر، دموکراسی و ثبات در منطقه و مدافع و مروج ارزش های اعلام شده در اعلامیه جهانی حقوق بشر باشد. Thank you. Uh, friends, colleagues, and Madam President-elect, Mariam, it's a great honor to share this panel with you today, to listen to your remarks, and I think they are informative and constructive. It was always a great pleasure to welcome you, Mariam, to the European Parliament in Strasbourg, um, where we had the European Parliament Friends of a Free Iran. So thank you for inviting me and giving me the opportunity to join the panel here today. Um, I think it's important that we understand that when human rights and democracy are restored in Iran, it will not only impact Iran's future, but also the future direction of the entire Middle East. Just as the current regime is the source of terrorism, repression, and instability. A future democratic Iran could be the source of human rights, democracy, and stability in the region, and a defender and a promoter of the values proclaimed in the Universal Declaration of Human Rights. The current failure to uphold international law and to hold the Iranian regime to account for its systematic human abuses, human rights abuses, has resulted in the alarming trend we see today at an international level and in the UN, where the Iranian regime teams up with other dictators to foment war and break down the rule-based international order. So the United Kingdom must take the lead at the United Nations to move the international community beyond strong condemnation of the Iranian regime and towards concrete action to enforce international law and the UN Convention on Human Rights. On Sunday, we observed Human Rights Day which commemorates the adoption of the Universal Declaration of Human Rights by the General Assembly 75 years ago. And if the values and principles and rights proclaimed in this landmark document are worth celebrating each year, and they are, then it's only right to stand up and defend these values and not allow them to be trampled by, by the regime in Iran without any fear of repercussions. I have to say, I am very pleased to see that David Cameron, Lord Cameron, has been made our new foreign secretary. So I say to him and to our government, we must not be afraid to call out the Iranian regime and especially to prescribe the IRGC. The government should officially support Mariam Rajavi's recommendations to end the impunity of Iran and publicly demand the arrest and prosecution of the regime's leaders at an international tribunal. As soon as the regime's mercenaries and terrorist proxies see our resolve, they will fold and retreat. We know that the regime in Iraq, in Iran, is rejected by the people. The Iranian people want justice, human rights and democracy. They're not going to fight to keep the present regime. They are already fighting to overthrow it. 
We're seeing this right across Iran today, how brave women, men and youth are defying this brutal and merciless regime. And in their fight, they get inspiration and hope from your leadership, Mariam, and the resistance movement you lead. The people of Iran know that you and the NCRI will not compromise on the Iranian people's legitimate demand for a democratic republic and for the pursuit of justice against the regime's leader. So I agree with you, Madam President-elect, and I support your call on the UK government to refer the regime with its appalling human rights record to the United Nations Security Council for prosecution of the regime's leaders. I also agree that Raisi should not be invited to speak at the UN or tour European countries. He should be arrested and sent directly to The Hague to be prosecuted for his involvement in the 1988 massacre of 30,000 political prisoners and the killing of over 2,000 protesters during the uprising in November 2019 and 2022. So, I call on our government to make the appropriate representation. May I also urge my former colleagues and now honourable friends in both Houses of Parliament to take up Mariam's recommendations presented here today with regards to, to securing accountability, to debate and adopt them in Parliament, and to make it the expressed view of both Houses that our government should make these recommendations a priority in its future policy on Iran, and especially they should prescribe the IRGC. Thank you. Dr. Jocelyn Scott, ما زنان ایران را دیدیم که چقدر محکم استادند و در شما خانم رجوی تجسم یافتند. بزرگترین موانع در برابر تحقق آرزوی آزادی در جهان رژیمی است که همکنون در ایران حکومت می کند رژیمی که مشغول نقض حقوق بشر همه مردم ایران و کشتار، قتل، اعدام و شکنجه کردن است موسیقی 1948 was the year that the United Nations passed the Universal Declaration of Human Rights. This declaration was passed in order to recognize the inherent dignity and the equal and inalienable rights of all members of the human family as the foundation of freedom, justice and peace in the world. It was also in that, um, in the United Nations Universal Declaration, that all countries and all peoples agreeing and a part of the United Nations reaffirmed their faith in fundamental human rights, in the dignity and worth of the human person, and in the equal rights of all women and men. There was optimism at that time, optimism of the advent of a world in which human beings would enjoy freedom of speech and belief and freedom from fear and want, and that was proclaimed as the highest aspiration of the common people. Now, we sit here today in the year 2023, and sadly, 75 years have passed and that aspiration has not been met. And one of the greatest impediments to that aspiration is the regime that currently rules in Iran, a regime that is dedicated to the lack of human rights of all the peoples of Iran, a regime that is dedicated to killing, to murder, to execution, to torture. There are three points that I'd briefly like to address today. Um, one, the issue that has been mentioned previously of President Raisi. 
to the question of the um, 104 persons, in, uh, Iranians, who are currently on trial in their absence in Iran, and three, the issue of the women of Iran who stand as a tribute to the strength and purpose of women as an example to all of us around the globe. First, President Raisi. The issue of the invitation to him to attend the United Nations Refugee Forum in Geneva stands as a blot on that um, on those who issued the invitation, but not only a blot on them a blot on everybody who supports, every country who supports that invitation and every country who allows that invitation to stand and President Raisi to appear and to attend. Every country that supports that is complicit in condoning President Raisi, who, as we know, was central to the killing, to the execution, to the murder of 30,000 Iranian dissidents, political prisoners, persons who simply stood up for the right to say they had a right to determine for themselves what they would believe in politically and what they would agitate for. Secondly, on the issue of the 104, the um, United Nations Declaration of Human Rights is, of course, relevant here. Everyone charged with a penal offence, and these human beings seem to have been charged with something out of the blue and uh, put forward as a penal offence, has a right to be presumed innocent until proven guilty according to law in a public trial in which she or he has had all guarantees necessary for defence. That is completely lacking and it's yet another abrogation by the mullahs of the regime of Iran against the Declaration of Human Rights. And finally, on the issue of the women of Iran, we have seen the women of Iran standing so strong and embodied in you too, Madam Rajavi, um, and at pres the present time, the agitation that's being seen there in terms of the right to wear the hijab or not to wear the hijab is a, a tremendous expression by the women of Iran of this Article 19 of the Human Rights U Universal Declaration. Everyone has the right to freedom of opinion and expression, and this includes the right to, free, to have freedom to hold opinions without interference and to seek and receive and impart information. Those women are seeking to impart to their, um, their fellow women and to the world that they stand for the right to wear what they want to wear and not wear what they don't want to wear. And that is simply an expression of a political opinion to which they are entitled. And finally, may I refer to Article 5 of the Human Rights Declaration. No one shall be subject to torture or to cruel, inhumane or degrading treatment of pun or punishment. And that is what the women of Iran are being subjected to. Article 6, everyone has the right to recognition everywhere as a person before the law and as a person in terms of human rights. The women of Iran resist rape, they resist torture, they resist sexual violence in all its forms, they resist the denial of dignity, they resist the denial of autonomy, they resist the denial of personhood. We in this room today stand determined that one day soon, we will all be standing there in Iran holding hands with the brave women of Iran. And we will stand with you, Madam Rajavi, and all that you represent in terms of the rights of women of Iran, because until the rights of personhood, freedom and democracy is extended to every woman in Iran, then 
all the people of Iran stand without those rights of human dignity and personhood. Thank you, Madam Rajavi, for being here this evening, and I appreciate very much having had the attention of everyone here. Thank Madam Rajavi, thank you very much. In bringing this meeting to a close, the first is that I and all those who have spoken today and all those who support the uh, Committee for Freedom in Iran condemn utterly the total absence of human rights in Iran. We condemn the show trials which started today in Tehran, and I call yet again for the prescription of the IRGC. This must happen. I'd like to thank everyone who contributed today, and I'd like to thank Madam Rajavi for her presence throughout the meeting. It is very, very much appreciated.